Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Uh, the reason I'm recording this video is because I want to show you how to run a Dogecoin node. I've uh, seen a lot of tweets, a lot of uh, comments, a lot of posts that there's a lot of you guys that need help with this, so I felt the need to record a video. Uh, I'm currently running a Linux box, Kali Linux, so I'm going to show you how to run a Dogecoin node on a Linux box. Uh, the steps should be pretty simple for any other operating system. If you feel like you need help or you get stuck somewhere, you know, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, send me a message and I'll do the best that I can to try to help the community out. Uh, running a Dogecoin node, I know I, I've seen a lot of questions. Uh, how does it help you? Honestly, you know, by doing this, you're actually helping the Dogecoin community itself, right? You're, you're helping the, the Dogecoin of blockchain and uh, I'm running this 24 7 on one of my old laptops it doesn't draw a lot of energy it's not gonna hurt for you to run it 24 7 uh, you know disclaimer that's that's how I do it you don't have to run it 24 7 I do it because like I said I I wanna support the community and I want to contribute to the community right so the first thing that we're going to do, guys, and I want you guys to pay very close attention, is you're going to go to Dogecoin.com and make sure you're going to the right uh, website because there is a lot of websites out there. You know, there's a lot of hackers, a lot of scammers. So always make sure that you double check your URL, Dogecoin.com. Make sure it's HTTPS, right? So once you get there, you can see this is the legit website. Um, I already have this set up on my laptop, but I'm just going to show you how to do it. Uh, once again, if you get stuck, you know, replay the video or put a comment out there. I'll do my best to try to help you out. Since I'm running, uh, you know, Dogecoin, we're going to get the Dogecoin core. This is what you need to set up the node. I'm running Linux, so I went ahead and click on the Linux 64-bit. Uh, you can choose whatever operating system you're on. Like I said, the process is pretty much the same. Once you download the file on your Linux box, you go to your downloads folder. For mine, it's here. Uh, you want to right click on that. You want to extract the files. So once you extract the files, for example, I extract here, uh, it's going to extract the files. Uh, inside this folder right here, um, you're gonna see a Dogecoin folder, right? Once the files get get they get extracted, you're gonna see the Dogecoin dash 1.14.4 folder. Okay. Uh, so I went ahead and moved that folder to my Documents folder, as you can see it here. Uh, you can leave it on the downloads. You can put it, you know, on your desktop wherever you want. So once you do that, you're gonna right click on that folder. You're gonna open Terminal here. Okay. You're going to open the terminal. Once you open the terminal, you're going to type in ls. ls, you know, it's it's going to show you what's inside that folder. So then we're going to move to this folder, the, the bin folder. So you're going to type in cd uh, bin. So once you're inside that folder, you're going to do ls again because you want to see the contents. This is the file that we want to open to run the Dogecoin node and the Dogecoin core program. So once you have that, you're going to type in dot forward slash and you're going to do Dogecoin dash QT, right? Hit enter. That's going to load the Dogecoin core program and make sure you are running the latest version, right? If you don't have the latest version, you can download the latest version from the website that I just showed you. So we're just going to sit here, wait for this to open. We're just going to wait for that to open. Okay. We're still waiting for that to open. This just takes a few minutes, guys. Uh, so my, mine's going to open right away because, like I mentioned to you guys, I had already downloaded the program. And, um, you know, it, it downloaded all the blockchain data, right? So if this is your first time uh, opening the program for the very first time, you're going to see another small little window. And that small little window, you're going to see 
that is downloading the Dogecoin blockchain is going to say something like seven years uh, behind. Don't worry about that. It's not going to take seven years. Uh, depending on your internet connection, you know, it might take a few hours. You might have to leave your laptop on overnight, and then the next morning you can configure the node. So once once this opens, and actually, you don't. Uh, you don't have to wait for the blockchain to fully download in order to set up your node. Uh, you, first thing you want to go is, and you can minimize that other little window. You can minimize it. Once you minimize that window, you can see this. Go to settings. Go to options. Uh, one thing that I like to do is start Dogecoin Core on system login. That way, you know, it automatically starts. If you if if you turn off your laptop or if you reboot your computer. Uh, that way the program automatically starts and you don't have to do that command uh, command line again. So that's one thing that I like to do on my end. <laughs> the next thing you want to go to is the network. Uh, I chose, you got to choose allow incoming connections, okay? So if that's not checked, go ahead and check that. Um, there's, you know, these are other options that you can check. The only options that I have is the allow incoming connections. Okay, so make sure you do that. The next step is you're going to go ahead and open a uh, terminal window. So I'm going to open my terminal window on my Linux box. And you're going to do the if config command. So we're going to get the IP address of the uh, computer you're setting up your node on. Uh, I'm, I'm connected to my network via Wi-Fi. So I'm going to look at my wireless LAN adapter. If you're not on a Wi-Fi, then you're going to see your IP over here. Since I'm on a Wi-Fi, the IP is going to be the iNet IP, which my IP, this is my private LAN IP. So make a note of this IP, guys, because you will need this uh, to open the port or to configure the port, right? So once, once you do that, uh, make a note of this. Okay. So now I'm going to go to my router. Uh, my router is what's controlling my current network, right? Um, a lot of you guys, if you don't know this or if you don't have a router, uh, the majority of you guys probably have a router. Uh, so basically, if you have an Internet provider, right, they, they give you the modem and then you have your own router. So your own router, you can control your network. You know, you can open ports. You can do port forwarding, all of that stuff. If you don't have a router and you only have a modem, and you want to do this uh, again guys you know I'm only doing this because I want to contribute to the Dogecoin community and I want to help out the blockchain um, so if, if you don't have a router you can get a you know you can get this Tenda routers real cheap on Amazon they don't pay me to promote them <laughs> um, this is just the router that I have it works perfectly if you do buy a router to control your network, uh, you will have to call your internet provider at one point and tell them to put your modem in bridge mode. That way you can control your network through your router. Okay. Um, I don't recommend you doing that if you don't have any networking experience, uh, not trying to be rude or anything. But then again, you know what I'm teaching you, if you follow this, you will be able to configure this. But if you do have a router, then it makes things easier, right? <laughs> So, uh, you know, my, my router IP is the 192.168.0.1. Uh, so that's my router IP in my private network. So I'm going to log into my router. Okay. Once you log in, you know, this is my router setup. They're all similar. Um, you know, I'm using a Tenda Wi-Fi router. Pretty good router. Um, if you have a Netgear, it's pretty much the same. So I'm going to go to my uh i'm gonna go to advanced settings uh i'm sorry system settings and i'm gonna go to dhcp reservation right what this does guys is basically you're setting up in a, a static ip a private static ip that way if your laptop reboots or if you turn off your laptop at night or if you turn it off for a few hours you know when your laptop connects back to the internet your IP address doesn't change so it's you're basically setting up a private IP internally which is what you want that way you know your IP doesn't change and, and your Dogecoin node is running at all times without interruptions uh, so the way that I do it on this router is you see this little lock here 
uh, you just click on it so you click to bind that basically tells the router hey bind this IP address to this computer right so that's basically telling it don't change the IP address for this device basically it's staying the same forever unless you know unless I reset the settings on the router but that's not gonna happen so once I do that you want to make sure you do that you know you save that uh, once you do that you're gonna do you're gonna forward the port that requires to be open in order for your Dogecoin node to work so on my device I'm, I'm gonna go to advanced settings and my device is the virtual server uh, sometimes uh, some of the routers out there are gonna say port forwarding so you click on the port forwarding you know tab on your router mine is the virtual server so I click on that right here is where I'm gonna open the port and the port that that Dogecoin uses for the node is 22556 as you can see uh, this is the IP right which is the same IP address that's attached to the to this computer as you can see it back over here on the command prompt the terminal that we that we typed it in sorry command prompt is for Windows terminals for Linux I use both so I get confused sometimes but you guys get it so you know this is the same IP that's the same IP that you're gonna put right here on the internal IP address on the LAN port make sure you type in 22556 on the WAN port you type in 22556 as well and on the protocol go ahead and choose TCP and UDP once you do that you click on new or click save and it's gonna put it down below that means that you have successfully opened that port right so that ports open I uh, you save the settings mine automatically saves them uh, we're done with the port forwarding in the router itself now we need to set up port forwarding on the Linux box itself uh, Linux you know normally comes with the firewall right if you have the firewall enable uh, or if you don't have it enabled I highly recommend you to enable the firewall to do so you're gonna type in sudo UFW enable okay what that does it's gonna enable your uh, Linux firewall mine's already enabled so I don't have to run that command I'm just telling you guys uh, so if you want to see the status you do sudo uh, space UFW space status right you hit enter uh, you type in your Linux box password and so you can see my firewall is active on this Linux machine and I have already opened this ports myself okay so and, and, we're, and I'm just gonna go ahead and do it right because I'm teaching you how to do it so the next command you're gonna type in is sudo uh, UFW allow okay that's gonna that's telling the firewall to allow this port and the port that we're working with is 22556 you're gonna do the forward slash TCP okay we're gonna allow that port to be open for the machine it's already skipping the rule because I already did it but I'm doing it to show you guys so ignore you're gonna see on your screen it's probably gonna say that it opened the port or you know you might not see anything so now you're gonna do the UDP for that port so sudo UFW allow 22556 forward slash UDP okay you're gonna hit enter once you do all of that go ahead and type in the sudo UFW status hit enter and you will be able to confirm whether those ports are open or not if they are successfully open on your Linux box you're gonna see the status is gonna say active and right here is gonna show you that port see how it says allow action allow from anywhere okay so that means that we are allowing incoming connections to this Linux box for the Dogecoin node to fully function on your computer once you do all of that you go back to your Dogecoin core wallet the software once again verify that you're running the latest version of Dogecoin node the core wallet you're gonna go to help go to about Dogecoin core 
you want to make sure that the version you have is version 1.14.4 which is the latest version of dogecoin and if you want to make sure or verify that the node is fully working you click on help you go to debug window right here excuse me guys i'm sorry right here uh where it says network okay number of connections right here okay see how my connections are 12 right now there's currently four connections in and four uh, eight connections out this number is going to change throughout the day okay there's times where my mine says 64 connections that's how you know that your dogecoin node is fully working and you're fully supporting the dogecoin uh, blockchain uh, once again i hope you guys learn from this video uh, it's very simple very easy um, dogecoin army let's go to the moon Thank you for watching, guys.